we're back to explore. I did a video here last fall, and this was about all we could see because the road was closed. Battlefield Tour Road. And this time, the gate is open. These white stakes show the outline of American fortifications. Imagine walls of horizontal logs with earth packed against the outside, and there would have been trees with their branches sharpened to form sort of a barbed wire fence. This is the spot where General Burgoyne wanted to capture. This small red farmhouse belonged to John and Lydia Nielsen. Lydia had been taken somewhere south of here and John stayed to fight. Generals Benedict Arnold and Enoch Poor took over the house as their headquarters at the time of the battle. This monument recognizes the Polish engineer who designed the American fortifications. To the unknown American soldiers who perished in the Battle of Saratoga and were buried in unmarked graves. We're now at Bemis Heights, which is where the Americans had set up powerful cannons to bombard the British as they traveled south along the Hudson. The area was swampy in 1777, and there was only a narrow path that General Burgoyne's troops could pass through. Jotham Bemis was fined for neglecting his militia duty and later arrested. His wife Hannah was also arrested for corresponding with the enemy. They were both released after years of confinement. Apparently this is an example of what the Americans used. Apparently this path to our right is where the American scouts went on the first day of the battle, and it comes out near Freeman's farm. It's where the first clash occurred. At least I think I have that right.
this monument is to recognize Timothy Murphy, who was a sharpshooter in Colonel Morgan's rifle corps, and who apparently took the shot which mortally wounded General Simon Fraser. Now, from what I understand, the British considered it taboo to gun down an officer. And it's believed that they had a chance earlier in the war to shoot General Washington, but elected not to. Here the battle raced back and forth on September 19th and October 7th. The marker says this is where the first assault took place. British soldiers were spotted in this field leading to the second battle on October 7th. American troops were able to get here pretty quickly and an intense battle broke out. This marks the spot where General Simon Fraser fell. This is where the British set up fortifications. The stakes once again show the outline. Brett Bremen's redoubt, where the battle ended, it's where 600 German troops fighting with the British camped. There were also 160 Americans who were loyal to the British Empire here, as well as some French Canadians. When the Americans took control of this site, there was no way the British could continue. We're coming to the spot where Benedict Arnold was shot. He was shot in the ankle, shattering the bone. He had defied orders by General Gates and come here despite being told to stay in his quarters. His defying those orders might have been crucial for victory. After eight months of healing, George Washington named Benedict Arnold the military governor of Philadelphia. The problem was that Benedict Arnold, by that time, nursed a major grudge against the United States. He felt he'd been the victim of mistreatment. He secretly sought British support and shared military intelligence he was exposed as a traitor at West Point in 1780. This monument is a tribute to Benedict Arnold for his role in America's victory, but it doesn't mention his name. I've only seen about 70% of the battlefield. I wish I had time to see General Frazier's burial place and a couple other things, but time's sort of slipping away. I need to get to our final point of interest. We're heading to the town of Victory. Just taking in a little scenery. It's beautiful up here.
right up on that hill, a major event in world history took place. Right here in what is now a residential neighborhood. Here's where it happened. It was a stunning turn of events. It was the first time in history a British army surrendered, and it was the turning point in the Revolutionary War. It happened right here. A day famous in the annals of America, thus ended all our hopes of victory. It's Lieutenant William Digby, British 53rd Regiment. Surrender was a new experience, said the wife of Burgoyne's German commander. I have the satisfaction to present your excellency with the convention of Saratoga by which his excellency, Lieutenant General Burgoyne, has surrendered himself and his whole army into my hands. Here's what it looked like that day. Hope you enjoyed this look around Saratoga Battlefield. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.